What's up, guys? This is Alex from Xtrades. Back to you with another weekly trade ideas list and index overview. Um, today, we're going to be going into some technical analysis on the top five setups for the week. Last week was just insane. Um, I literally forgot we had a CPI report, uh, so there's that. So we had the we we did cover the FOMC meeting, um, gave a heads up on that, and the triple witching day, which was on Friday. But I totally forgot that we had the CPI reading as well on Tuesday. So. Um, that made the week even more interesting. We had some great put setups. Um, Netflix probably being my number one, honestly. Uh, if y'all were able to catch that, I mean, probably got some amazing returns. So make sure you go back, review that, get some educational value out of it. Let's go ahead and get into our first setup here. So we're looking at Oxy here. This is um, oil and gas, obviously. Uh, so this is going to be a part of the energy sector. You can see we got a clear trend line, uptrend line. You got test one, test two. This is test three while also touching the 200 EMA on the daily time frame. So this could be good for calls. Um, I'm going to be looking for it to curl up about here. Maybe reclaim back over that 62.77 and head up into 65.76. So that could be your short term price target. Um, if it can get over that, make a base, go higher. Obviously, you can, you know, shoot for the stars. But yeah, I really like this one. Um, another thing with this trend line, if it did decide, let's say energy just wanted to crap the bed for some reason. You could wait for it to oops. You could wait for it to break the trend line, and um, once you get the confirmed trend line break, you, you know you can maybe look at puts. Only if it flushed the trend line, and it probably head back to that support if it did. But otherwise, um, we have that confirmed candle holding up here. Give the 200 EMA support. Um, your next area of confirmation would be that 62.77 getting broke over, reclaiming, and heading back up to 65. So hopefully, um, you know we can see some bids in the energy sector. Um, maybe see some strength despite the market weakness so yeah keep an eye out for that watch crude oil futures maybe look at like natural gas and stuff and uh yeah just trade safe you know always wait for confirmation as i always say so our next one we're going into meta here so this is originally facebook obviously i really like this one because it did show relative strength on friday so it was lagging to the downside um with the rest of the market you got like qqq and the spy obviously they were down way more um, Meta was up on an upgrade from JP Morgan, I believe, and um, it still had that reaction to supply that uh, bears will look for. So despite having relative strength, I feel like this confirmation can off supply can give it a move back down to demand. We're we'll probably trying to curl up about there. So yeah, this is a put setup I'm looking at. Obviously, you do have this like uptrend line you can probably worry about if it wanted to come back down. Um, it could even be forming like an ascending triangle. If you don't know what ascending triangle is, it makes, you know, higher lows, higher highs with a flat top resistance and then eventually, you know, breaks out, back tests and breaks out some more. So it's a bullish pattern, just unconfirmed right now. Um, you do have this multiple top reaction to supply and um, a nice candle to confirm maybe that, you know, sellers stayed in control at this level and will head back down to demand. So yeah, looking at puts on that. This is another put week, it looks like. Um, even though the seasonality is pointing towards, you know, a rally for the uh, the rest of the year, I still want to be cautious just after that Fed meeting. Um, it was pretty hawkish, you know, there wasn't really any confirmation of uh, talking about rate cuts anytime soon or anything that would really stimulate the stock market um, on bullish sentiment. So, so yeah, I'm going to be playing careful again. Um, maybe look for a trend to get established just because all that money um, expiring on Friday for the op options expiry, I mean, it could free up a lot of capital. And um, now that all the news is out of the way, it could give us a chance to see some stability. But who knows? After the FOMC meeting, it's just not looking promising for the rest of the year. But we'll have to see. So yeah, Oxy, looking at calls. Meta, looking at puts. Going to AMAT here. So what do we got? We got a... It looks like it broke out of a pennant, fake breakout, coming back down. Um, now breaking below the uptrend line. So this is a pennant fake out, obviously. And uh, now it's breaking down, um, with the exception of holding up this 200 EMA support, maybe. We want to see it flush back down to this little pivot. So it's like $100 even. So it could be like, you know, about four points to the downside. Um, it'll also meet up with this 50 EMA. So that could be a price target as well if it wants to flush below this 200 EMA. So you want to see it getting under the 200 EMA, also staying under the uptrend line, and um, also seeing this MACD stay in a sec uh, negative signal, seeing the KDJ stay in a negative signal, etc. But yeah, um, this looks like another good put setup. Uh, you just want to be careful, wait for it to flush the 200 EMA, maybe short term. Look for that confirmed selling at the cash open. And, you know, make sure you are getting the confirmation that you need to know that you got a good entry. But yeah, if you, I mean, if you zoom in a little bit, it looks like it, you know, already got a little 
pop and back test rejected the seller's wicker showing that it pushed down up until the close so um, that could be your back test um, confirmed so yeah it could have lowered down to the 100s so we're going to put on that so oxy calls meta puts amap puts next we're going to jd so jd is actually more of a weekly time frame setup that i found um if you zoom out go to the weekly time frame you got test one test two this is test three you had a little short-term fake out breakout now pushing back into the uh, trend line for a third test, which is honestly makes total sense because the third test is usually always the one that establishes the trend. So you see a sell off for a little bit, uh, maybe have a fourth, fifth, sixth test. It just depends before breaking out. But um, right now it's in the third. So you're still early or you could still be early. I can't really speculate if you are early, but for this, you'd be looking for a move down to this pivot low. It's at uh, 54.68. So probably flush down there, try to curl up about there. Uh, you want to see that break first, obviously. Um, if you want to shoot for a lower price target, this would be more like a short term day trade because it's so close to support. Uh, if it does want to break that, you know, it would head to the 50 EMA area where you see right here. So that's a 50 EMA. You can use that as a price target as well. Um, if you want to shoot for more than just 54.68. So yeah, another put setup. Um, I showed you the weekly time frame. You do have the MACD crossing to the downside on the one day. Uh, KDJ is negative. So, and also you can see it's actually getting under the 200 EMA. So we just set this back a little bit, but a visual order sent it back. Um, you can see, I mean, it's breaking the 200 EMA, which is right here. Um, it could be a good one for puts. Watch the Hong Kong index. You know, they trade in a different time zone. So um, last week we, we were watching FXI. Uh, for that rising wedge breakdown it did break down so that could help you know maybe other large caps break down as well just remember that you know these do have like lots of big gaps because of the time zone difference um so sometimes they'll have different cash opens so yeah just uh, be mindful of that also be mindful of china's political nature uh, i know there's a lot of bull crap going on for that so uh, trade safe on that one next we'll go into lvs so lvs has a clear uptrend line breaking here you got a negative macd signal to the downside um if we zoom out here you do have peak resistance right here and you can see it's that 4827 so it did try to break out multiple times out of that was not able to was not able to hold the uptrend line thus giving you uh, maybe a quick uh, flush right here you have a little bit of volume increasing nothing like too significant um you could see a flush down to this pivot first at 46.33 and if that breaks you know you can see one down to the next one below which is 45.56 if you want to see those break you do have even more room down to this little demand area so that demand area is right here uh, what is that like 44.35 so um this is a nice demand candle uh i could probably put you uh, lowest at that point honestly just because i don't know how it's going to react to demand um demand zones are pretty strong a little bit stronger than regular support i think uh, just because you know an imbalance happened in this area to lead to this huge upside so you have to see how it reacts once it gets down here before trying to aim lower and you'll see me preach that in pretty much any setup i take uh that's heading into a demand zone so uh 46.33 good price target because you got this big bullish candle and then 45.56 another good price target because you do have this bullish candle right here too um just two levels to be mindful of you maybe day trade down into this uh swing trade just get you know 60 to you know 30 to 60 days expiration let it deal with the support um see how it reacts to the support if it seems like it wants to break it can stay in if you're getting good signals that you know it's holding up you maybe want to get out so yeah really nice tr uh uptrend line break though so we're looking at puts on that so that's your four put setups and then your one setup for calls on oxy uh just want to see the energy sector go up look at crude oil and all that for oxy um, I didn't want to just have like straight puts this week. Uh, I wanted another option just in case um, because of the seasonality, you know, it does show we rally up until the end of the year. So, and we'll go into that next. So we're going to go into the SPY, the S&P 500 here. I usually go over the futures, but I mean, they're not even up or down that much right now. So, um, and I really wanted to show you guys this gap. So this gap, this gap did get filled and now it's heading into a demand zone. So honestly, spy bears, you need to be careful here. I took profit on my puts on Friday, I believe. I want to see how it reacts to this demand area first before reshorting, maybe get under the demand zone low. So bulls, you maybe have an argument for it to curl up here. Head back up to this key level. What is that at 3090? And then obviously you have your main high up here, which is at the 410s. If it even want to consider getting back up there, it'd have to get over 390, uh, clearly. While also reclaiming your 50 EMA, while also reclaiming your 200 EMA, 
etc. Um, bears, if you want to see it go lower, obviously you're going to get it under demand zone low, back test, and then, you know, go lower. So you do have to be careful of this demand zone. Uh, in a bear market, sometimes they don't even get respected, so you do, uh, bears still do have the chance of it just flushing. Um, I'm not seeing any major move in the futures right now, so obviously there's not too much fear yet, but I mean, it's still early, so no clear setup on this. Bulls, you do have that one argument for a counter trend reversal, so you can maybe day trade calls or something off this, uh, demand zone. Bears, you want to be careful shorting down here, to be honest. Um, and I could be wrong, but I mean, all you can do is play, you know, the zone and play the levels. MACD is staying at a negative uh, signal still. KDJ is still in a negative signal. Um, you can see it gave a false buy signal over here. So sometimes the MACD is a little bit better. You can see it stayed in a buy signal for here longer, stayed in a sell signal uh, still despite this, you know, ugly uh, false buy signal. So uh, just use indicators of caution. Realize that they use, you know, lagging data and um, yeah, trade safe with them. Use it as an extra form of confirmation. And before we get into the QQQ, I am going to go into the S&P seasonality here. So our trading week is December 19th up to the 23rd. Merry Christmas. We also have a negative 0.03% return. So essentially um, in the last 72 midterm years here, uh, we had a flat, essentially flat trading. So take it how you will, but I mean... Maybe that's confirming that we're not going to go anywhere this week. It could be due to liquidity being low, people going out on holidays, Wall Street, you know, not uh, partaking as much due to being away with their family, you know, who knows. But yeah, so you do have that to keep in mind. But the week after, I mean, it's just a straight shot for the seasonality uh, to the upside. So we'll have to see. Maybe it's a consolidation week. Like I said earlier, maybe you want to wait for a trend to get established. Let that loosened up money from the Friday expiration uh, jump back in the game and you know, let Wall Street hash it out first, maybe before entering something. But um, I'm probably just going to be sticking to day trades again, mostly. I did have a couple of swing trades last week. Obviously, they had 30 to 60 days expiration, at least, per usual. And um, I was able to give those room. I had some pretty good ones. We're just going to let the let the market do what it does. Um, keep in mind the seasonality, obviously, so it could be flat. Also, realize that spy is at demand, so uh, you don't want to be maybe overly bearish yet. Maybe wait for that demand zone low to get taken out. So for QQQ, you can see it broke this rising wedge. Um, well, somewhat of a rising wedge. It broke the uptrend line, uh, rejected off supply. Also broke this 278. Uh, 278.78 main support once it broke that i mean quick really quick flush this gap hasn't totally filled so this could be um you know it could be uh, premature to say that you know it could have a counter trend reversal because it could still fill this gap fill the rest of it then head down demand and curl up about there so qqq bears i think it looks better for you guys than it does for the spy and if qqq is not exactly aligning with the spy demand that could bring you know that could bring the spy down lower with it to be honest because i mean tech is pretty heavily weighted in the spy so yeah this qqq gap doesn't make me feel great for the bulls so uh, maybe bears you do have a good argument for a move down for puts down to this uh, demand zone low because this gap hasn't filled yet so yeah keep that on watch um bulls obviously they would need to reclaim 278 78 and um i mean they have they have the 50 ema in the way still 200 ema is all the way up here macd signals negative kdj is negative so um i mean it doesn't look great but there is a big sell imbalance to fill here so if it could uh, get over 278 that could be good for you guys uh, for the bulls so yeah that's qqq and spy next we'll go into the iwm so this is the Russell 2000, aka small and mid caps. So we have a main support here at 174.11. Um, it looks like you could even draw a demand zone here. You got a demand candle. Honestly, it, it did flush below it, so not sure how reliable that would be. All the, all the liquidity and all the orders have been filled and it's been through it, so um, maybe I won't draw that. But it is notable that it did close over the 174.11 low. It does have decent buy volume too, so it looks like, I mean, the, people try to bid it up and prop it up, you know, before the weekend. So maybe bulls do have an argument for a counter trend reversal here. Bulls, or I'm sorry, bears, obviously. Um, if it opens up under 174.11, I mean, there's pretty good room back down to, for a flush. There's not really anything holding it up here. Um, we do have a little demand zone here. Oh, you could even account this big one as a demand candle. So yeah, um, that could be why it propped up there because of this big demand candle. Um, and you can see the wick reaction and the push up due to touching this uh, imbalance area. It's a pretty big imbalance area, honestly. I don't, I don't know how to feel about shorting, but um, if you're not counting the demand, you do have that uh, 168.19 low you could look at, which comes from over here. But yeah, I mean, this demand zone, I mean, really big imbalance candle 
that led to more upside. So, I mean, that could be the reason why it, it did get propped up here. So, yeah, we're just want to see a whole 174.11 for the Bulls. Um, open under and sell off uh, from 174.11 for the Bears. With, a, I would say, a max PT of 168.19 if it, you know, wanted to flush to the downside. Uh, Bulls, your max PT, I, you know, I could put you at, like, 177. Uh, the 50 EMA maybe, but that's about it. That's about as far as I can go for that. That's all your indexes uh, for equities. Next, we're going to go into the VIX. This is the volatility index, a.k.a. the fear and greed index. So last week, so we were looking at 22.63. Um, it closed over that Friday, and we were looking for it to be able to maybe continue higher, head up into the 2022 average close. It did exactly that, rejected right off the area. And actually, the VIX did this before the market even sold off. So the VIX was going up with stocks right before the CPI release, which is really strange. Um, I, there's a lot of speculation it could have been from the VIX futures uh, rolling over um, and, you know, the, uh, the ES futures kind of having an effect on um, supply and demand for uh, the VIX. So that could have resulted in, you know, more upside for the VIX. There's even a lot of people that have VIX calls. Uh, I was reading on Twitter and they weren't even getting any gains uh, despite the VIX, you know, closing. What did that close up? 9.6%. So a huge move on the VIX uh, going up with stocks, which is doesn't really happen that much to be honest unless there's like you know really big uh, really big implied volatility to be expected in the next 30 days which the cpi print i mean it's if you think about it, it's pretty normal because i mean it's just a huge uh, expected volatility day so yeah it did reject right off the 2022 average close right off the 200 ema 50 ema area and um started heading back down to the 19th which is pretty much expected because, I mean, it, unless they, like, reclaimed over, then you could start saying that, you know, the VIX is going to go higher. Mark's going to start flushing super hard. Um, if you see a big rejection candle like this, I mean, nor most people are going to expect the market to go up pretty high. Um, and it did on CPI day, but it, it sold off right after uh, the FOMC meeting. So Jerome Powell put us back in place. Honestly, I got a little bit more of like a neutral reading from Jerome Powell speaking because he wasn't really like shooting down the fact that they will adjust if they have to, if you know, and maybe be able to cut rates or maybe change their terminal rate. Because a lot of people, they're looking for the terminal rate. They thought it'd be at 5%. The median ended up being at 5.1%. So I think that had a huge impact on equities and uh, did indeed send them lower along with some other statements. You'd have to go back and watch a lot of it there's a lot of a lot of good bits in in that speech so um, maybe go watch it and um maybe read a little bit um on macro you don't have to know everything um you don't have to be you know an economist to understand what's going on you know just look at the basics you know go and listen to jerome powell's speech um a lot of times i mean the algorithms are just going to react off keywords so crazy week guys i mean just insane with how low the market went you'd think the vix would be higher honestly we're going to see this 2263 hold and for me to be like even more bearish i really want to see it get over the 2022 average close and start pricing in higher volatility because i mean this vix close just doesn't scream to me um the market's going to go too much lower in the short term so i really like it to get it back over 2581 or just, you know, maybe these moving averages um, to show me that the market will be more bearish. Uh, for bulls, you want to get under, you know, 21s, head back to the 19s, and uh, maybe try to curl up about there. So literally, we're in the same spot. <laughs> we're in the same spot that we were last Friday. Because, I mean, it closed at, what did it close at? What is that, 2282? It closed at 2263, so it's not that different. And if we go to the data, just so you can see that this average is legit, I type in all these manually. You can see um, after this week, um, it did bring the average down to 25.81. So ever since I started doing these videos, I mean, it was up in the 26s. So, I mean, it's dropped pretty nicely. But if you, if you don't really understand what this is showing, I mean, this is, what we've, this is what we've averaged all year. So when it's under, you can pretty much assume you're getting a pretty fair deal for implied volatility about 30 days out. If it's trading over, you could assume that, you know, premiums are very elevated. You might be getting ripped off. You know, they're gonna be more expensive. Another really good thing about the 2022 average close is it's a good mean regression target. So if it gets up to 35, like such, you know, we were calling for a mean regression back down. We got that once it got to 19s, looking for a mean regression back up. Um, you know, you can get puts cheap down here, get, you know, calls that are expensive, but you can get a good price for calls when it's elevated. So um, that's all we use it for, just a mean regression target. And, um, you know, once it hits the area, you know, kind of have to wait for it to you know, start pricing in either either over or um, you want to see a rejection. So 
yeah, that's the VIX. Same spot as last week. Um, so pretty much same outlook as last week. You want to see it holding, head back up to the 2022 average for uh, the bears. Bulls, you want to see head back down to 19. So that's pretty much your key level, just that 22.63. And um, I mean, maybe this 21.07 as well uh, for Bulls. If he wants to get under that, that'd be good. Next, we're going to the dollar. So this is the DXY, the dollar index, really just down channeling. Um, pretty much, I was looking for a counter trend reversal off this trend line, and uh, it did that. Now I'm going to see it head back up to, sorry, I want to see it head back up to the trend line. We'll probably reject about there. So I'd say this looks good for um, if you're bearish on stocks, uh, just because just because this upper trend line um, hasn't been tested yet. So obviously, if the dollar goes higher, people get spooked. So this would be good. Um, and you also have this 200 EMA here. So same thing as last week. Basically, you wanted to get over the 200 EMA, make a base, and um, bears also. If you're bearish stocks, you're also going to want to see a breakout. Um, but yeah, this is still mid range, so it hasn't reached the trend line yet. So I'd say you know. I see the dollar still has some room to go up, to be honest, um, which could st send stocks lower. But otherwise, I mean, we're just going to be waiting uh, for Monday. We're going to see how it opens. Um, you want to see like the first 15 minutes, you know, see how the cash open is, see if there's, you know, sell programs, buy, buy programs, um, see how the currencies open up. And uh, yeah, but otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to go ahead and get it chopped up and send it out, uh, get it uploaded for you guys and start working on uh, the written report. So if you don't know, you can go to the Watchlist channel uh, on our Discord and you can get a written report on these five setups um, if you don't have time to watch the video. So make sure you check that out. Um, I love you guys. Trade safe and always wait for confirmation.